the curse of Bobby Lane. Quarterback Bobby Lane led the Detroit Lions to three NFL championships, 1952, 1953, and 1957. Despite this, the Lions, thinking he was past his prime, traded him to the Pittsburgh Steelers in 1958. As Lane left, he reportedly declared that Detroit would not win for 50 years. Over those 50 years, the Lions have had the worst winning percentage of any NFL team, and had a single postseason victory in 1991. On the 50th anniversary of the trade, the curse went out with a bang as the Lions became the first NFL team to go 0-60. The Curse of Coogan's Bluff When the Giants left the polo grounds at Coogan's Bluff, in New York City for San Francisco in 1957, betrayed fans reportedly hexed the team so it would never win a World Series. Away from New York, the Giants have not won the series since 1954, despite National League pennants in 1962, 1989 and 2002. Furthermore, in two of those series, games in San Francisco were delayed by nature's wrath. Game 6 of the 62 series, was held up three days by extremely heavy rains, and Game 3 of the 89 series was postponed 10 days by a massive earthquake, that damaged the Giants' home field, Candlestick Park. The Sports Illustrated Cover Jinx According to legend, the athletes appearing on the cover of Sports Illustrated go on to experience bad luck. SI's first cover subject, baseball player Eddie Matthews, was also the first victim of the jinx, suffering a hand injury one week later, that forced him to miss seven games. Over the years, the jinx has produced losses. The 1987 baseball preview featured the Indians with the declaration Believe It, Cleveland is the best team in the American League only for the team to lose 101 games, and finish dead last, injuries, and even death. On the other hand, Michael Jordan appeared on the cover a record 49 times, and made it through with life, and limb intact. Sports Illustrated did their own analysis of the phenomenon, for a 2002 issue and concluded that, 37% of their cover subjects suffered a demonstrable misfortune, or decline in performance following their appearance. The Curse of Billy Penn Philadelphia had long had a policy of not allowing buildings, higher than the statue of city founder William Penn, that stands on top of City Hall. This ended in 1987, with the completion of One Liberty Place, which is nearly 400 feet taller than City Hall. Penn apparently responded to his demotion by cursing Philly's pro sports teams. Over the next 20 years, the Flyers lost the Stanley Cup twice, 1987, 1997, the Phillies lost the World Series, 1993, the 76ers lost the NBA Finals, 2001, and the Eagles lost the Super Bowl, 2004. In 2007, when the Comcast Center became Philadelphia's tallest building, workers tried to break the curse, by attaching a figurine of Penn, to the final beam. It worked, as the Phillies won the World Series the next year, The Curse of Marty McSorley During Game 2 of the 1992 Stanley Cup, the Los Angeles Kings held a 2-1 lead over the Montreal Canadiens. As the game was winding down, Candians coach Jacques Demers became suspicious of the curvature of the stick of Kings defenseman Marty McSorley and asked that it be measured. Referees determined the blade was too curved and sent McSorley to the penalty box for two minutes for using illegal equipment. Montreal capitalized on the one-man advantage with Eric Vizgerin scoring to tie the game. During overtime, Vizgerin scored again to win the game for the Candians and tie the series at one game each. Montreal won the next three games, and the Stanley Cup. Since then, no other Canadian team has won the championship.
sport teams got to the Stanley Cup Finals, only to lose to an American rival, the Vancouver Canucks were defeated by the New York Rangers, 1994, the Calgary Flames lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning, 2004, the Edmonton Oilers fell to the Carolina Hurricanes, 2006, and the Ottawa Senators lost to the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, 2007, granted, none of this explains why all of Canada would be punished, instead of just Montreal, or why the team that didn't cheat is the victim of the curse, but no one said curses had to be either logical or fair. One Canadian team managed to find a loophole in the curse, the Quebec Nordiques moved to Denver, in 1995, became the Colorado Avalanche, and won Stanley Cups in 1996 and 2001.